Good day chaps. So today's video is going to cover a new tank revealed by World of Tanks. A vehicle they call a German tank destroyer. But in reality, it's yet another bit of history that they have bodged and altered and tried to change to suit their game. The real proposal was for a main battle tank and part of the future main battle tank story. This is the KPZ-3T. The future main battle tank study, which recovered quite a bit from the UK side, was a joint Anglo-German project that ran through the 1970s. The idea was for both nations to work together to develop a joint main battle tank that would be usable by the United Kingdom and Germany. This project, so often overlooked today, was the most important tank project undertaken by NATO during the Cold War, and shaped not only the tanks we have today, but how they would operate and look. Although the joint project, like so many others, fell apart in the end, with some particular belligerence from the UK and shady behind-the-scenes development from the Germans, without this project, vehicles like the Leopard 2, Abrams and Challenger might never have come about, or at least they would have been very differently configured to those that we know. For the UK, it arguably began the slow decline and death of its tank industry, while it propelled the German tank manufacturing capabilities to its current position. The original plans for future main battle tank led to some odd ideas and concepts, and several designs were looked at, but are roughly split into two main categories. These were the casemated tanks and conventional turreted vehicles. The Germans initially favouring casemated, while the UK felt that a regular turreted tank was the way forwards, but nevertheless dusted off some older ideas for casemated vehicles, and even went as far as testing the idea out, going as far as building a working concept in the form of a chieftain casement test rig vehicle, while Jerry built several under the VT vehicles with twin guns. But while these vehicles and the turreted vehicles had the majority of focus, there were other concepts and ideas bandied about. These included overhead and unmanned guns, semi-rotating tank guns, and for the Germans, a tri-axis tank turret based around a previous concept from Rheinstahl Hanemag, built in 1966. This vehicle had been an experimental machine, simply referred to as test vehicle with three-axis stabilised turret, developed and built on top of a modified Leopard 1 hull. The tank featured a turret that was semicircular in design and could pivot in three axes as opposed to the normal two of other regular tanks. This was not an oscillating design but rather a gimbal system where the gun was rigidly mounted and rather than rising and lowering like a conventional tank the entire turret pivoted on this axis like a gyroscope keeping it on target as the hull moved up and down on terrain or on a side slope. Ultimately, that older vehicle did not enter production, although the vehicle does remain today. But the idea was once again dusted off in the future main battle tank study by Reinstahl. This is not as surprising as multiple firms entered the study. However, despite full documentation and drawings being supplied, the vehicle was dropped fairly early on, as both sides worked on what to prune back and what to focus on, which also saw the end of overhead guns and a host of other odd layouts. So with that said, what has Wargaming presented, and just how much have they got wrong? Well, visually, it's not too bad, other than the gun appears to have had some blue pills and extended about 3 metres. Overall, the shape and look are about right, but that is entirely where the praise ends, as once again, Wargaming have twisted the vehicle's background, facts and other features to suit them. The first issue is, of course, the name of the vehicle, they have called it the KJPZ-3, not KPZ. This is because rather than just accept that it was made as a tank, they wanted it as a tank destroyer. Therefore, they've added a letter to make it a Canon Jagdpanzer. This was never a tank destroyer concept. Future main battle tank was not about that. So why try to deceive people it was? Why alter the historical facts and try to pass it off as a legitimate thing? And don't try to tell people your game has any trace of accuracy left wargaming. Because frankly, there are things living under damp logs that have a better grasp of history than your company. They've also radically altered the vehicle statistics, 
and proposed modules to suit their game. The turret, for example, was not semi-fixed with limited traverse to either side, but a fully rotating three-axis turret. There would be no reason ever to design a turret of this shape and position on a hull and then limit the rotation to 30 degrees, and as if reducing its ability to rotate wasn't bad enough, they've also knocked its gun depression from minus 12 degrees, one of the benefits of the Traxxas design, to 7 degrees, while the elevation remains at plus 12. The original turret rotation was 40 degrees per second. Now the gun planned was the 120mm smoothbore, which was being worked on at the time, with an automatic loader firing APDS, heat or hesh rounds, with 46 rounds stowed, 24 in a vertical magazine underneath the gun, and 22 kept in the aft of the vehicle, which could be fed in via rear access hatch, which is missing from the model. To increase accuracy, a laser rangefinder would have been fitted, as well as day and night sights of the crew and 8x optical fittings. The two turret crew, commander and gunner, are on the left hand side, front and back, while the right hand side was used to stow the electrical equipment. Moving on to the hull, which they've added a lot of weight to, the real proposal being just 42 tonnes, the most noticeable feature is the engine. During the future main battle tank project, the Germans went a bit over the top, developing quite monstrously powerful tank engines of around 2,300 horsepower, with up to 3,000 horsepower per post on some. Now this was not a continuous power rate, but rather used a very short burst to get the vehicle in and out of trouble. But they were problematic, in that they released great gouts of blue flame from them, and needed to be flushed with super cool gas after about 10 seconds to prevent them from exploding. It might look cool, but having a tank that undergoes an engine prolapse after a few seconds is not that desirable. The KPZ-3 had the same engine, a whopping 2,367 horsepower unit that would run at 1,700 horsepower as a standard, and this was via a rank HSWLL 504 transmission. This drove the tank via the front sprocket and the seven road wheels, which had torsion bar suspension, although hydropneumatic was a possible upgrade. What's less obvious is that the documents state that the engine and transmission was at the front of the vehicle, while the cooling was at the back, and that the engine block added additional protection. This can be seen with the primary air intake to the front right-hand side, and the driver mounted further back to the left-hand side. A top speed for this tank isn't listed. However, the same engine in the VT series, which weighed a bit more, gave a speed of 70 km an hour and an estimated burst speed of 100 km an hour for those 10 seconds. In game, however, they've listed it as just 45 km an hour, which isn't that impressive. They could have added a turbo mode, as they did for other vehicles in the game, at the risk of causing an engine fire if used for more than a given time. And if you're hoping the armour was going to be this vehicle's saving grace, sadly you're also going to be disappointed. The vehicle's plan show the frontal armour was just 54mm, which on its own doesn't sound too impressive, but this was angled back at 82 degrees, which gave it a whopping 388mm of frontal armour. The nose was 90mm at 54 degrees for 143mm, while the sides ranged between 38 to 30mm. However, the top half had 16 inches of spaced armour, and the lower half was protected by the tracks, wheels and skirt. In game it has just 30mm flat, which even with the angling would be overmatched by anything over 90mm. The turret itself was 40mm angled back to about 48mm. However, this was only the outer skin. A large spaced armour air gap of between 1 foot to 3 foot then separated the crew, before an additional 30mm plate and then a 90mm plate angled back for 117 to further protect the crew. However, in-game, they've just given it 40mm. So to summarise, they've taken a 1972-era tank and removed all the features it actually had, including the turret function, depression, the ability to traverse, while stripping off all of its armour and halving its speed, and then changing its very role, because they're too creatively bankrupt and thoroughly inept to actually use any of the myriad of other vehicles they could have used in place, just to farm out a few more euros from an ever-dwindling player base, but confident enough to swindle and distort the truth and further confuse the players 
who've really been so misled that it's going to take decades to clean up after their mess. Well guys, that's the end of this history slash rant. If you did like this or you want more, let me know below. I'll only ever give you the truth from the original documentation, so that you can at least stay informed. But until next time, toodle pip. <laughs>